Welcome back everyone to the next episode of the Pathfinder Let's Play. Last episode, our people just started to leave the Aldari Sword Lord's Castle and head towards the Stolen Lands. And that's where we'll pick up today and enjoy the video. Surviving a terrible night, our small team set off to brave our fate. Beware, Stolen Lands. Heroes are on the way. Okay, so now we are starting our Trial to the Stolen Land. We will be victorious! What do we got? We got three little wolf thing revolvers. This should do it. Your life ebbs low. You deserved it. Tear them apart! Awesome. We got some pelts, which will be good for some money, and we'll continue on our way. Here we are, we have arrived to Oleg's trading post. Let's see what's up. Follow my lead. And some dude is running, yelling, save yourselves, fools. Bandit. In the name of the Stag Lord, the <laughs> a lawful authority in the Stolen Lands who demands this week's tax and some beer. And what is that pretty wife of yours, Oleg? She should serve us dinner. Kressel. Quiet down, Oleg. We're here for the Stag Lord's tax. Hand over the money, we'll be on our way. Oleg. You want to drink some of my blood, too? I'm sick of you. You're like locusts. You think you control everything around here because you put up a painted rag of yours? Come here and squeeze this dry and come. Oleg, a large man with a rough face, stops when he talks, notices you. Ah, you must be the guest from Rostov. Alright, what options are we having here? Uh, we have a couple of options, and we're going to just go with the lawful, mm, or, yes, lawful neutral. My task is to clear this land of bandits, and I'll start right now. Kressel, retreat, we're too few for a fight, let's call for help. For help from the camp. Bandit, no way. It just means you can roll a few idiots instead of one. To arms, everyone. Our victory is certain. Alright, we got the half orc dude, which we'll have. A calculated risk. Death will take him on. What Aaron will take waste. that guy on. Let Aaron will down. take him, and we'll have. Lindsay attacked the half orc as well. Alright, we haven't hit. We did some hits. Let's see. Become as dust. <laughs> Arms already down. Oh, now we can. We'll just take everything here. 
Now we can do some leveling up. Alrighty, we're going to take another level of fighter for Dublin. Right, we can get some skill points. So we're going to do... We are going to increase persuasion by one. Increase the athletics. And knowledge of the world by one. Okay, then we have bonus combat feat. Okay, we're going to get Sunder Armor. Alright, we're going to increase this level of Cleric. Okay, we are going to do his knowledge of religion, and I would actually, uh, we are going to increase his mobility by one as well. And that's all we can do. Next is Lindsay, we're going to increase her level barn. Increase our trickery. Uh, we'll do mobility as well. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Increase your perception and stealth. And I think we're gonna do lore. Or no, not lore. We'll do knowledge can. Can the observer do? Combat trick. Fast stealth. Iron guts. Skill focus. Actually, what we'll do is we'll, we'll give her canny observer. Let me get some spells. A level one spell. I think I already have that one. Yep. Okay, we have Cure Light Moons, and we're going to. I think fire bursts would be useful. From where I call, there are some enemies that are only affected by area attacks. So some giving Lindsay an area attack would be quite useful. Now for the barbarian. All right, we're gonna give her uh, mobility, athletics. And we're going to increase, not religion, we're going to do nature, and let me give her 
Use magical device. Just at least a point in it. Okay. I'm going to give her carded stance. Okay. Looks like we got three out of the four. Oleg, take that, you scoundrels. Oleg shakes his fist. But now, my girl got away. Plague on her. She's a certain to complain to the stag lord they came before to collect taxes but this time they'll come to punish treason <sighs> now what are we to do if i could only send svetlana somewhere safe and show those rats what's what dove why are you here i told you to stay hidden it's all over i saw it just need to make sure you're all right my name is Svetlana. I'm sorry your arrival to our trading post turned out so unwelcoming. And I'll say, I saw someone run out of the trading post. Do you know who that was? Oleg. That must have been Boken. He sells potions. He lives out in the forest like a hammer, but he comes here every day. He knows every tree and brush in the area and knows how they can help you. Stag Lord's gang wants him to work for them. He lacks the courage to fight those bandits, but he won't just walk away from us. He has a good heart, and even if he grumbles a lot, especially recently. Alright, then Oleg, I'd like to see your goods. Don't know what good trading will serve those bloodsuckers come back and take everything, but alright. Now we'll look. Alright, now we are going to... Ditch everything you don't need. And all the band equipment that we just got. And do that. Balkan has returned. But we're going to check everything out here first. Alright, so he does have a chain mail. She could use the only max two max dexterity, but she only has one anyway. So give her that. And we'll sell everything that we don't need. Uh, we will get rid of the masterwork mace. The two rings that aren't enchanted. Okay. Next, we're going to talk to Boken. I'm Boken, local herbalist. What brings you here? Tell me about yourself. Okay. Could use your help fighting the bandits. Where's this coming from? You want an old man like me to fight? Here, take this potion. Consider that my help in your fight. And he gave us a potion of cure wounds, and then we'll have Lindsay attempt to do a diplomacy check. The bandits here bother you as much as Svetlana and Oleg, maybe more. Help us get rid of them for good. Well, alright, I'll show those troublemakers. Maybe they'll learn better, learn better than to chase an old man around, so I might even write up some verses about me. Maybe even heroic ones. Lindsay says, please be careful. Go ahead and help, but leave the heroics to us, you hear? Talk later. Let's get to the point. You see the bandits are going to attack again. Who are they and when will they arrive? 
Who are they? They're the Staglords gang, that's who. These land teams with bandits like bedbugs in a bugger's hut, and you just stirred them up. They have a camp not far from here. I expect they'll return full force in half a day, maybe less. The stag lord won't take an insult like this lightly, and his henchmen are more like demons than men. Alright. Tell me as much as you know how many baronets are there, and when do they want? What do they want? The blows of thunkers think they own this land. They come, and take what they want, and steal the better part of our money every month as a toll for the leader. They even broke our gate so we can try to hide anything from them. No one knows exactly how many there are. Sometimes only five or six guns, sometimes it's the whole gang. I should have shown them for what long ago, if not for Svetlana. Now we're gonna say I'm prepared for the attack and get in your positions and wait. Finally, a fight. I was bored with all that talking, said Amory. Lindsay said, well, these aren't the heroics I was hoping to write about, but I guess the integrated city of heroes had to start somewhere. Oleg says, I see you're not easily cowed. I'll help you fight. I got a bunch of alchemist fire we can use. We can put it by the gate and then set it off with a burning arrow when the bandits get close. I'll even shoot the arrow myself. Used to be pretty good with a crossbow back in my day. I like your idea. So Elena says, I beg you, be careful. And please don't let Oleg do anything too risky. So let Lena go and s hide inside. We're going to meet our guests. Right, six hours later, and here we go. Does it matter? All right, we are going to start with our bard. Go and inspire courage and start firing crossbow bolts. Gonna have Aunt Mary charge one, Devlin charge the other, and we'll have Harum attack Three one of them pins. as well. Lindsay, move up and attack this bandit. But I think we're good. Well, sorry, was lost in thought. And we'll get all the loot and sell it all. Oleg. You rats got what you deserve, now they know better to treat honest people like cattle. And Bokin here taught them a thing or two as well. Now my lord, head up onto the guest rooms on the second floor, you deserve some rest after such a battle. I need to clean things up. And as for your efforts, now don't offend me by trying to turn it down, just take it. An honest fight deserves an honest reward. If that were more common practice in this world, I think life would be so much better. He hands over, uh bag of a hundred coins. Alright, we're gonna head into the tavern. And we're just gonna go head straight up. Not my lucky day. Right, we'll just get everything that's in there. And we're just gonna check a few things here. All right, bracers of armor plus one. Lindsay, we're going to give Lindsay the hat. I'm going to give him the necklace, give him color spray, 
And I think that's it. And Heron can wear the ring. I'm gonna give everyone some healing potions. And we're gonna use the bed. You wake up from a nasty dream that tortured you almost all night long. In it you saw a wall of unnaturally thick fog, fog that surrounded you, slowly moving closer and closer. Quick look out the window and you find out the fog was not a figment of your imagination, not a dream. And then... Hear me. Please hear me. Can you hear me? Please. Seems that only you can see or hear the nymph. Who are you? Who am I? Just a tear shed by the land itself. The bitter sigh of nature. I am a nymph, the guardian of this area. A defeated guardian. Call me the guardian of the bloom, if you wish. What do you want from me? Aid. Salvation. We have a common enemy, and long have I searched for someone who can defeat him. The one you call the Stag Lord. As a storm strikes ruthlessly with gusts and lightning, the Stag Lord wreaks havoc with the swords of his servants. And not just in the world of people. The land also suffers from the evil he brings. My forests and my flowers suffocate in this fog. Soon even I will vanish as the last ray of light fades at dusk. The Stag Lord is responsible for the fog? Yes. It hides his fortress as well as his dark deeds. While responsible, he did not create this affliction. It is the work of a powerful druid who has betrayed even himself. I know not why the powers did not leave this renegade, but even I was unable to defeat him. How can I help? This fog, it enshrouds, entangles, suffocates. If only I could learn how it was created. But my powers wane. I have barely the strength to call out to you. All I know for certain is that somewhere in this forest lies an old house. And it echoes with the remnants of a strange power. The Stag Lord and his druid were there. The fog hides this place from me. But I can point you to the bandit's camp near the Thornford. Make them tell you where this place is. Go there and listen to the echo. Catch the whispers. Search for anything that can tell you how the fog was created. Once the fog clears, nature will breathe again. And you will be able to easily find your way to the fortress of our mutual enemy. All right. I understand. Farewell. I don't believe in fate, stranger, but our meeting seems more than a coincidence. Okay, okay, let's see what we want to do now. Let's check with Svetlana. Good day. I hope you're feeling all right after that battle. I can't thank you enough for what you've done. I definitely don't want to waste your time, but if you have a moment, I have a request. What did you want to ask me? This, this is very a personal request. Maybe not important enough for your time. I'll completely understand if you say no, but the first time the Stag Lord's thugs came here demanding money, they also took my wedding ring. Just tore it off my hand. It's just a trinket, really, but it meant so much to me. 
I remember every moment of the day Oleg came to me, that ring in hand, to ask if I would marry him. I was standing in a fancy dress on the stairs of my father's home, fearing that I had misheard something or that I would say something stupid and everyone around would laugh. If you happen to find my ring amongst the bandit's possessions, please bring it back to me. It's easy to recognize. My name is engraved on the inside of the band. There is one more thing. Among the bandits, there is a dark-haired woman who wields dual axes. She's not bad in fight. In fact, she can be extremely dangerous and cruel. But please, I beg you, show her mercy if you have the chance. I can't promise anything, but if I do come across the ring, I'll return it to you. So Atlanta says, I understand. I appreciate any effort you put into it. And Devlin says, I have to go. Farewell. Alright, and that's our first side quest of the main game. Talk to Oleg really quick. Greetings, says Oleg. You certainly ruffled those villains' feathers. Well, anyway, new day, new troubles. We've seen the fog, never seen anything like it. The road to rest off looks like someone spilled milk in it, just hung in the air. I couldn't see anything through the soup, not even with a torch. Feels like witchcraft to me. I bet the stag lord's involved somehow. Rumor says he deals with all kinds of bad magic. And Devlin says, uh, Tell me about the stag lord's gang and any other bandits operating in the area. Oleg says, The other gangs, if they're still here, try their best to keep a low profile. As for the stag lord's men, well, most notable of them are his three new lieutenants. The oldest one's name is Akiros. He's from somewhere around Taldor. He's fierce in a fight, but from what I hear, he isn't cruel by nature. The other two are Dovan and Ox. Usually they're seed together. Ox is a mountain man with the mind of a five-year-old, albeit a mean and bloodthirsty one. He's quite the fan of torture and bloody executions. Dovan, though, that's one, that one's a snake in a man's body. I hope to never meet him in the flesh. Rumors about him are more than enough for me. And then I ask him, I need to take care of the stag lord. Do you know of anything that could help me find him? Oleg replies by saying, that's quite a task you set yourself on. The stag lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen of the most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The locations of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret, and with this fog hanging around, I'd imagine it'd be even harder to find. I suppose you could try following the trail of the bandits who attacked the post from before. They came from the southwest, from the side of the Thorn River. The fortress might be there, or at least some large camp of theirs where you can find information. And then Devlin asks, what else can you tell me about the stag lord? Oleg replies, not much. Not like I sat down and shared a cup of wine with the man, you know. But I think he arrived in the stolen lands less than a year ago from what I've heard. But as soon as he got here, he took over everything. I wrote to Restolf, tried to warn them that the Stag Lord wasn't some typical gang leader, but they didn't listen. The rumors about him are horrible. He'll kill a person if they so much disagree with them, and he never reveals his face. Those who've seen him up close report the same thing. Ugly scars cover every inch of his body, not covered by clothes. So then Devlin asks Oleg, uh, show me your wares, Oleg. Alright, let's see if we can get rid of some of this stuff. And 462 gold, that would be great. Let's see if they have anything. They have a ring of protection, but we can't afford that. Variety of armors, weapons, we'll probably do some stuff first if we're looking. But we do have a cloak of resistance. Now we'll stick to Bo speak to Boken. Boken puts his hands on his hips. Ha! Ah, old Boken still knows a few tricks to impress those blood-sucking dummies. Enough hiding in the damn bushes, I say. And Devlin asks, can I help you in any way? Boken glances at you, suddenly interested. Well, since you're asking, there's a cave nearby. 
You used to pick berries in there, but the place has been overrun by spiders. The berries are red and look a lot like raspberries. Fang berries, I call them. I'd be real grateful if you gathered a basket of them and brought them back. Just be quick if you do. They spoil quickly. And that put Fangberry Cave on our map. Vulcan continues by saying, Those spiders in the cave are mean. Here, let me give you some of my chemical fire. Crafted it myself. Burn those spiders to a crisp. That'll teach them for taking over my Fangberry Cave. I also need a bucket of moon radishes. They're a rare and mysterious plant. I don't know where to find them, but I do know the kobolds gather them high, value them highly. It's not a huge deal. I'll do it myself if I were younger, but if you're willing, I'll pay you. Three potions for the berries and a full purse of coins for the radishes. Alright, I'll try to help, says Devlin. Alright, and I think... From what I remember, these spiders require area of effect All attacks, to plan. which is why they gave us alchemical fire potions. And what we're going to do is we're going to gather the party and we're going to start exploring. And that's Fangberry Cave over there, so I imagine if we start heading in that direction, we can just explore. But at the moment, I think we're gonna avoid it getting a little bit of more experience before heading that way. A dirty old man in squalid clothing shuffles up to you. His gray hair is unkempt and he continually clenches and unclenches his wrinkled freckled hands. When he stops and looks at you, his eyes widen and he tugs at his beard. His name is Remus. Remus, strange weather, an invisible fog creeping out of the woods. Souls beyond the sky, obscures the sun and the moon. Strange. Amory says, I don't like this old man. Looks like the one who can cast the evil eye. Devlin says, The fog looks visible enough to me. Remus, I see more than ever. I have never seen so much before. But someone must look. No one else can. And Devlin asks, Who are you? And the man, old man freezes for a moment. Remus, but that won't help with the fog. Devlin asks, what are you doing here? The old man raises a thick eyebrow. I do nothing. Breathe, walk, observe. And Devlin asks another question. Invisible fog, do you mean that you can find your way through it? And the fog is wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. Devlin says, I should probably go. The old man stares at you intently. You hasten? You should. Your rival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. Devlin asks, my rival? Do you mean Tartuccio? He's not tall, but he wants to climb high. Beside him are those who could stand against him, and might yet still. Devlin asks, what power is he searching for? Remus replies, someone else's, old but forever young, that was which taken from another, that which gave joy and now gives death. <laughs> Devlin asks, can you tell me where he is now? He's in an old tomb, south of the trading post. Devlin thanks him. And I tell him, all the more reason not to linger. Farewell. The old man turns and walks slowly, muttering softly, Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, rebound with the claimer shall it be. Bound, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. Alrighty. Apparently there was a little bit of a bug right there, and uh, had to save and reload the game. All right, we know Tatuccio is to the south of us. Uh, there's an ancient tomb to the south, but we're going to head e or, um, west first and continue heading south. Okay, Bogart Hunting Ground. All right, and here we're going to try to gain a little bit of experience before continuing.
All right, we got three. Okay. Time's not waiting. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have Devil in charge. Focus on the goal. And Lindsay was called forth. Lindsay do a flare burst on that dude. Everywhere I go, um, and Amory will focus everything. on that. Enemy approaching. Okay, flare Serves burst works. Right. Devlin's retreating from the croaking. But I think Hammer and Amory will take care of the rest. <laughs> This should do it. Right. We'll have Hiram drink a potion. And then Lindsay, Lindsay should the have Lindsay the illustrious. Yes. Alright. Like Lindsay the Great. Maybe we'll we'll do everything, fight. get some money, some spear, some more items, and a ring. And that'll be a ring of protection. I think Harem and Lindsay both have the same AC. So I think I'm gonna give Harem a ring of protection. Okay. We're gonna explore. Okay, there's some more up here. We have a brute and two normal dudes. Let's I'm just see. Here. Just letting the ink dry. She can only do one more spell, and we are going to try to daze that Bogard. And it looks like it resisted. Let's see here. Looks like I might have resisted. Alright, there is a brute, but we're gonna just focus everyone on Repent. one Bogart. Them and just apart. try to get rid of as many of them as possible. Alright, he's chasing Lindsay, and Lindsay's gonna run. Devlin is going to charge this brute. Low. What? Lens is chaos. Last chapter. Alright, Harum will try to go behind. That's ah! good. But I didn't need to. Alright, Lindsay's hurt. We'll get all the loot over here. Now let's see, Lindsay is going to, to use Cure Light Wounds on herself. Axel, yes. Wasn't terribly great. We'll do a potion. Alright, there should be another Cloak of Resistance. And that will go with... Put it on Death Lab. I'm gonna have him camp. I wanna refill the spell slots. Harm did some healing, so we should have all our spell slots refilled. Alright, let's get out of here. Alright, we're pretty clue close to this uh, ancient tomb, so we're gonna try to head that way. And there's a random encounter. I didn't see anyone. We will be the ah, there we go. Bandit conjurer and bandits. Okay. A calculated risk. They 
go down! What a waste. You deserved it. Alright. We'll try to get everyone in. That was an exploded person. In due time. Little box here and fill with some good stuff in there. Collect it all. Looks like Artuccio, Tartuccio has some marks in here. Tartuccio. A gnome in gaudy purple garb seizes your attention. Of course, the scoundrel Tartuccio, who you know from your time in Rostov. The vile gnome is sitting on a small hill, expressing his discontentment in every way he can muster. Let me guess, you're still dawdling. <laughs> Should I make some tea in the meantime? Bake a pie, perhaps? Plant a small garden and harvest some cherries? Perhaps you'd be more comfortable wearing fool's caps and colored trousers. Then at least I'd be able to sell tickets. Come one, come all! Feast your eyes upon the slowest and the most ridiculous buffoons in Galorian! Sir Tartuccio, I may serve you, but I am no one's slave. We do what we can, but it is no simple feat to find an unknown object in the vast dungeon. Hold your tongue, gnome! I can hardly tell your twaddle from the buzzing of a fly! Quickly now, if we don't find that artifact soon, someone else might seize it. Someone who's standing over there watching you right now, you fools! <laughs> uh, let's see. We tried diplomacy roll. Let's do it. Valerie, I would say you and your sword can find better glory than in service to Tartuccio. He summoned you to fight the Stag Lord's bandits, but now he uses you for more questionable dealings. You're right. Tartuccio has deceived us. A warrior who bows to a lie. Who humiliates herself. There is no glory in this. I shall aid this scoundrel no more. I see my magnificent rival will stop at nothing, even at stealing the servants of his enemy. Let us see if your fools are even more useless than mine. Draw your swords and cover my retreat. Well, he's fun. Yeah! Oh, we also got Jaythal as well. Alright. So we got, looks like a crossbow person over there. Right. Mercenary, mercenary. Tatucha is probably going to escape. This okay, you're will going hurt. there. You're going Become there. as dust. Lindsay will attack them. And we'll have Amory assisting the fire. Oh. Jethriel, or whatever her name is, is uh, assisting the escape. This is where I'm interesting, they did a large person. Not like that's gonna help him. Everyone's a little wounded. We'll have Harem do healing people. That was lovingly useless. Much better. Seen from a f seen from afar to be cracks in the stone, but it turns out to be a faded image of the sun. A green jackal skull has been recently scratched on top of the image. The image carved in stone has almost completely worn away over the ages. One can still distinguish a sickle, sword, and a skull with a single eye socket covered with a coin. That is not far. And this sarcophagus 
judging by the outline, this vast relief wants to depict the sun and moon. Now it's almost completely eroded. And the relief in the back, on closer inspection, one can discern the outline of a head with a single eye. Fun. So we got Valerie now, and she can uh, increase her class. So we're going to do that. So she's more of a tank. We don't have any points of her ability scores. A little low in strength, though. High in constitution. Alright, what we're gonna do is. Dun, 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 dun. We're gonna increase her athletics by one. I'm gonna increase her mobility by one. And then, uh, Knowledge of the World by one. She does get a feat. She is a shield user, so let's see. We're gonna get her shield focus. I think we're done with in here. We're gonna continue going down. I see something. Looks like Lindsay spotted a trap. Or something. Oh, nope, a hidden switch. As it should be. Let's see. There's something there too. We're gonna to check. Would you look at that? No, that's trap. Lindsay can't undo that trap, so let's see what's over here. Okay, and it looks like there's nothing else in there. Vast relief the sun, long eroded. The vague outlines of four strange creatures have been charmed over it. Alright, we'll check this one. And there's an ancient cyclops coin. How sweetness, the first breath of fresh air after a stale dampness, damp stuffiness of that tomb. Before us stretch an unending heath, repeat with hills and gullies and patches of little shrubs. Already the trail of Tartuccio and his companions has gone cold. And we're going to do Lore of Nature 11, but we would not give up so easily. Whether the trail went cold or not, it was one we had to follow. And we succeeded at a lore check. No blade of grass was bent. It must have been enough time to straighten back up since whoever passed last through, but Heath's dry earth preserved the prints of little shoes. Our eyes to the ground, we followed the trail. We walked and walked until we finally came to a huge gully, the dried up bed of a river of yore. But what is this? At the edge, the grass was trampled down and the soil turned up in claw prints, lots of them. We'd stumbled upon a fresh battlefield. And here the trail split. One set of footprints walked away from the battle and down the gully. The brave footprints that faced down their enemies followed the path along its edge. We're going to do another lore check. We tried to imagine who or what left those claw marks. It was a fail. Unfortunately, we could not determine who attacked Artuccio and his companions. However, we could discern that there were plenty of attackers and they were rather small. to detect magic. We tried to find any traces of magic in the surroundings. We discovered traces of a spell, apparently from the illusion school of magic near where the lonely trail descended into the goalie. So we're gonna follow... that one. To our surprise, we discovered that the little shoe prints turned out to be turned into little clawed footprints on their way to the goalie. It was as if someone from Tatucci's band was wearing shoes, and then they took them off or grew claws, then jumped into the goalie to avoid the battle. We examine the other one. The path was frequently used, and the dust saw both sets of footprints together. It was clear that someone who had no claws left the battle surrounded by those that did. Uh, let's see, we're going to follow the single set of footprints down into the goalie. The way down was steep and it took some time to reach the bottom. 
Walking on the loose soil was difficult, but the clawed footsteps were easy to spot. The bottom of the gully went downhill, deeper and deeper. Finally, the footprints turned, rolled up the steep slope, and disappeared at the gully's edge. Couldn't admire the animal agility and clever claws of the creature we were following. The slope of forest was as tall as two men and ended at a hanging crest. Climbing such a slope would be no easier than climbing a sheer wall. However, a long, steady-looking root stuck at the edge from the ground. Uh, stuck out of the ground from the top. We're going to try the mobility check. There was one brave hero among us who decided to try his luck and climb the root. Lindsay's going to try that. She's got mobility 10. She succeeded at the mobility check. After tugging on the root, Lindsay took a deep breath and grabbed it with both hands and began the difficult ascent. Pushing with her feet against the slope and grabbing the root with both of her hands, she climbed higher and higher. Only her heavy breathing and faint creaking of the root broke the deadly silence. Suddenly, dust poured down from the top of the slope and the root began to slide from the ground. Keeping her wits, Lindsay shifted her weight to her legs and froze. After a tense moment, she continued her journey and soon had reached the top of the slope. After catching her breath, she lay on the ground and offered her hand to help the next of us up. After climbing out of the goalie one by one, we easily found the clawed footprints again and moved forward. Derek grew tense and we since they were approaching our target, and our intuition proved correct. Listen to me. A dragon, huge, sparkling, flew down to me from the sky and told me a secret. A great relic that will win the kobold's glory is hidden somewhere nearby. Enough of this pitiful existence. Search for it. Search and bring it to me. The leader speaks in the suspiciously familiar voice of the Nom Tatuccio. Dragon, glory, dragon, the voices of the kobolds rise in excitement. We know. The Midas under the old Siskamore, they possess, or the mites under the old Siskamore, they possess the magic treasure, very ancient. Alright, we're going to do our chaotic neutral response of, that's one thing I never expected to see in the middle of the forest, a circus show. When are you new trade, Tartuccio? You! When will I finally be rid of you? Don't listen to him, tribesmen. This liar comes to play tricks on us. You and you hold him back. The rest of you follow me. Our victory is certain. That's a fair amount of cobalt. All right, let's try this that. way. Three of you attack that. Serves you right. Follow my lead. All right, looks like there's a couple of things here. as much as we can. It's an imprint of the ground and near the empty chest. Looks like the another chest the same size sat here recently. But we're gonna continue chasing Tartuccio. Alright everyone, I am going to end it here. Uh, we are in the middle of pursuit of Tartuccio as he is now making himself look like a kobold. Hope you enjoyed this video. Be sure to like and subscribe and tell your friends about me. Have a good day.